Hey guys, in our video today, you will learn where the world's largest quarry is that was made to mine minerals. You'll understand why water doesn't flood the Diavik diamond mine that's in the middle of a lake, and also see ancient gold models found at the beginning of CE. Since ancient times, humanity has researched and processed the Earth's interior to mine minerals. As civilization developed, that need only grew. In the end, spots have appeared in various places of our planet to mine necessary resources. Some of these places present interest for specialists, but that can also stun any visitor. Mining resources has a multi-thousand-year history. In that time, humanity has developed various ways to obtain resources. Solids are mined in open mines or underground. Liquids and gases are obtained by drilling a hole, then pumping them out. Beginning in the 1960s, resources started being mined on the ocean floor. Today, you'll hear about the places where mining is done in open mines as well as underground. Their sizes are so grand that they can be seen from the sky. Let's start with the copper giant, the Chuquicamata mine that you have probably guessed is used to mine copper. It is in northern Chile. The copper reserves in Chuquicamata were known to the Incans who mined and melted copper ore before the Spanish arrived at the continent. The mine has been active since 1915. Its size today is simply astounding. It's hard to believe those little trucks down there are giant vehicles weighing over 200 tons that are about 50 feet long. Here, people are capable of the incredible and can literally flip over mountains. Currently, the Chuquicamata mine pit is called the largest in the world. It is 2.7 miles long, 1.9 miles wide, and almost 0.56 miles deep. These numbers make it the second largest hole in the world, after Bingham Canyon in Utah, USA. We can say without a doubt that Chuquicamata is one of the largest holes dug by people using mechanical tools. Residents from Kalama, a city about nine miles away, work in the mine, but until 2007, there was a Chuquicamata mining camp where over 10,000 people lived. It was closed because of proximity to the quarry and environmental pollution. Currently, the camp is uninhabited and access is controlled by the mining company. You can only visit it in a tour group. Overall, the town is well preserved since it's in a guarded area and looks like a ghost town with a stadium, playgrounds and schools, offices and even a theater. Next on our list is a place that was input into the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1997. It's the ancient gold mining Las Medulas region, which is located in northwestern Spain. It has long since closed. Mining lasted from the 1st century CE to the 3rd century CE using mine shafts. Las Medulas was the most important gold mine in the entire Roman Empire, and while it flourished, as confirmed by ancient Roman writer Plinius Meyer, it mined about 6.5 tons of gold a year, and there were 60,000 miners in the shafts working. In the 250 years of operation, millions of tons of gold-containing ore were mined, and the location formed an unusual cultural landscape that now attracts tons of tourists. Many mines in the world are at high altitudes. For example, Chuquicamata that we had previously mentioned is in the central Andes at an altitude of 1.76 miles above sea level. But it's far from Grasberg, currently the largest gold mine in the world, and the third largest copper mine. It's in the Papua province in Indonesia, near Jaya, the tallest mountain in New Guinea and Oceania. The quarry's edge is at an altitude of over 2.5 miles. It looks very unusual from above, 
since it's surrounded by mountain peaks. Its history began in the mid-1930s when the Dutch discovered copper in the ice. Mining began much later, though, in the 1970s. Grasberg is currently the highest quarry in the world. The complex includes the quarry, the underground mine, and four enrichment plants. About 20,000 people work in the complex, and they regularly organize strikes. In 2017, 5,000 workers in the mine participated in a strike that lasted over four months. Despite the problems, Grasberg continues to grow. Canada treats the environment and its workers with care. In the middle of the Lac de Gras, just 136 miles from the Arctic Circle, is the very interesting and operational Diavik Diamond Mine. Diamonds were first discovered here in the early 1990s. After several years, the source was declared economically viable. Building a mine required much time and energy. There were two reasons unique techniques were used to create it. The first is the harsh climate, and the second is strict environmental constraints. Diavik is on a 7.7 square mile island, and safety for open pit mines and minimalizing pollution in the lake could only be done by holding the waters of Lac de Gras back. A complex project was developed for that, and an almost 2.5-mile dam around the mine was built. Five independent experts monitored the water levels. In the summertime, some angles make the mine look like two huge holes in the middle of a lake. This unique site has no equal. The Diavik complex includes two mines, comfortable living quarters for the workers, warehouses and offices, a pair of power plants, a processing plant, and an airport. There are about 1,000 employees working there. They process up to 2 million tons of ore a year, and the mined diamonds are valued on the world market first and foremost for their white color and good transparency. In 2018, Diavik appeared on World News Reports because of a surprising discovery. A piece of yellow diamond the size of a chicken egg was found. It weighed over 4 ounces, or 552 carats. It's considered the largest diamond found in North America. Amazingly, the programs used in the mine won several competitions and have brought a generally accepted positive effect on the life of the locals, as well as in protecting the environment. That shows that mining doesn't have to damage nature. Now, let's move from Canada to South Africa, to the city of Kimberley, founded in the late 1870s. It's primarily famous as the world's diamond capital, and even the Kimberlite pipes are the remains of ancient volcanic activity, containing high amounts of diamond for which the city was named. It's true that it currently most draws attention as a tourist center. It is visited by many from various countries every year who want to feel the past for a short time and immerse in the atmosphere of diamond mining. Kimberley's main tourist site is the Big Hole Mine. It's considered the largest quarry in the world dug by people almost completely by hand without any machines. It was developed by thousands of workers who worked day and night without worrying about exhaustion for money. During the quarry's development, 22 million tons of rock were removed over 40 years and change. Its original diameter was about 1,640 feet, and it was up to 790 feet deep. The big hole was closed in 1914. It gave the world 6,000 pounds of diamonds. Big Hole is a surprisingly beautiful place today that has been made as attractive as possible for tourists. Big quarries are visible even from space. They look like injuries to our planet, but without them, we wouldn't have valuable resources, and it's extremely difficult to imagine modern civilization without them. Or maybe we should try to live differently. Well, let me know what you think in the comments. And if you learned something new and it was interesting, leave a like too. And don't forget to subscribe either. We'll see you next time.